Welcome to this lesson on the Astra SIP terminals 6730 and 31i user training and features. In this lesson, we'll cover the following topics. We'll explore the option list menus. We'll go into the preferences menu and look at a variety of submenus. I'll also talk about the password, status, and lock menus. Then I'll demonstrate the following features. How to activate the speakerphone, the mute and hold buttons, and what they look like on the LCD screen. I'll transfer a call, make a conference call, I'll access the callers list, I'll demonstrate call forward, do not disturb, and I'll access an XML application. In this lesson, I'll use the 6731i to demonstrate the features and function of the keys. The 6730i and 6731i have four significant areas. The phone has eight programmable buttons, a three-line LCD screen and navigation keys, a dial pad area, which includes hold, redial, and the goodbye key. The goodbye key is used to hang up on a call or exit out of a menu. It has a standard dial pad, volume controls, and a mute button. The fourth area has seven hard-coded buttons for the most commonly used features. Options, which opens a menu where you can customize and display information about your phone. Callers list, which gives you a call history, conferencing, transfer, two hard-coded line keys, line one and line two, and a speakerphone slash handset toggle button. I'll start with the seven hard-coded buttons on the right side of the phone. I'll press the options button to open the options menu, and I'll use the up and down and left and right arrow keys to navigate, display, and modify the menus. I'll follow the instructions on the LCD screen. Unless otherwise specified, I'll use the up and down arrow keys to cycle through the different menu choices. I'll press the right arrow to enter a menu or accept a choice once I'm in a menu. While I'm in a menu, I can press the up arrow to cancel, and in various menus, I can press the left arrow to go back one menu. I'll press the down arrow to display the first option, call forward. Notice the number one to the left of call forward. This is the first option in the options menu. I have two choices. I can press the right arrow key to enter the menu where I can display and modify the settings or I can press the down arrow to continue to the next option. My system administrator has also programmed a call forward button on one of my eight programmable keys. So I'll configure and set up call forward a little later in the lesson. I'll press the down arrow key to go to the next menu. The next option menu is Preferences. Again, notice the number to the left of Preferences. This time it's a 2, indicating the second menu. I'll press the right arrow key to enter the Preferences menu. Notice the number is no longer displayed. This indicates I've entered the Preferences menu. I'll press the down arrow once to display tones, and I'll press the right arrow to enter this menu. I'll press the down arrow to display ringtones, and then I'll press the right arrow to enter this menu. A check mark indicates your current selection. I'll press the down arrow to cycle through the ringtone choices. When I have found the ringtone I want to use, I'll press the right arrow to set and accept my choice. I'm not going to go into every menu, but I want you to see the process of where you select a menu or an option within a menu by using the up and down arrow keys. And press the right arrow key to enter the menu or accept an option. I'll press the left arrow twice to go back one menu. And I'll press the down arrow to go to the next menu, contrast level. I'll press the right arrow to enter this menu. And I'll use the left and right arrow keys to adjust the contrast level. I'll follow the on-screen instructions and press the down arrow to set the new contrast level. Using the speed dial edit menu, you can program in speed dial numbers. You can also use the web user interface to program speed dial numbers. If you turn the live dial pad on, the IP phone automatically dials out 
and turns the hands-free mode on as soon as a dial pad key or soft key is pressed. Now let's go into the set audio menu. I'll go into audio mode first. This menu allows you to configure how the hands-free button works. There are four options. If you choose the first option, speaker, when you press the hands-free button, calls will toggle between the handset and the speakerphone. You will select the second option, headset, if you want to make or receive all calls using the handset or headset connected through the handset port. You will select speaker slash headset if you want all incoming calls to be sent to the hands-free speakerphone first when you answer the call by pressing the hands-free button. By pressing the hands-free button again, you can switch back and forth between the hands-free speakerphone and the headset. You will select headset slash speaker if you want all incoming calls to be sent to the headset first when you answer the call by pressing the hands-free button. By pressing the hands-free button again, you can switch back and forth between the headset and the hands-free speakerphone. Once I've made my selection, I'll press the right arrow to set and accept this option. Next, I'll arrow down to headset mic volume. I'll press the right arrow to enter this menu. In this menu, I can set the mic volume for low, medium, or high. I'll select medium and press the right arrow to set and accept this option. I'll press the left arrow to go back one menu and I'll press the down arrow to go to the next menu, time and date. There are a variety of menus to set up the time and date format. However, your telephone system should automatically take care of this for you and no modifications in this menu should be necessary. The AstraSIP terminals have multilingual support. You can select English, French, Spanish, German, Italian, and Portuguese. All languages may not be available for selection. However, Astra offers additional language packs that can be loaded. I'll press the left arrow to return back to the main menu. Now I'll press the down arrow and continue with phone status. In this menu, you can check things like the IP address that your SIP phone's been assigned and the current firmware that your phone's using. Under the user password menu, you can change the password of the phone. The password characters must be numeric and the factory default is blank or no password. You'll need a password other than the factory default to lock or unlock your phone. I'll talk about locking and unlocking your phone in just a minute. The next menu is the administrator menu. This menu is only for administrators and you must have an administrator password to access this menu. The next menu in the list is restart phone. If you select this option, you'll be prompted that you want to restart the phone and if you do, the phone will reboot. The last menu is Phone Lock. The user or administrator can lock the phone to prevent it from being used or configured. Once the phone is locked, the user or administrator can press the Options button and enter their password to unlock the phone. And as a side note, the phone can be locked via the web user interface. And one last thing, anytime you're in the Options menu and you want to exit out, you can press the Goodbye key. This will exit you out of wherever you're at in the Options menu quickly and return your screen to a normal display. Next, I'll answer a call using the hands-free mode, then I'll mute that call, and then I'll place the call on hold. When you have an incoming call, by leaving the handset on hook and pressing the line that's flashing, on my phone, this activates the hands-free speaker mode. Notice the red light lights up on the hands-free key. Now let me press the mute key. You'll know that the mute key feature has been activated when the mute key light is flashing red. Pressing the mute key again unmutes the call. Now I'll place this call on hold. When I press the hold key, the line key LED and the ringer LED both flash and the icon on the LCD screen changes. Pressing the hold key a second time will remove the call from hold and connect you back to your caller. Now I'll demonstrate how to transfer a call. The first thing I need to do is to answer an incoming call. After I answer it, I find out they need to be transferred to another extension. 
When I press the transfer button, I have two choices. I can perform an unsupervised transfer. This is where I dial the number and then I hang up and the call is automatically transferred to that extension. Or I can perform a supervised transfer. This is where I dial the number, I wait for the person to answer, and then I give them a heads up on who's calling. As soon as I hang up or press the goodbye key, the call will be connected to the person I'm transferring the call to. The 6731i supports three-way conference calling. However, my telephone system has been set up to allow my 6731i to support n-way conferencing. In my demonstration, I will set up a three-way conference call, but I could keep adding more people to the conference call by repeating the process. The first step is to dial the first party. Once they've answered, I'll press the conference button. This will put them into a hold state. Then I'll dial the second party. Notice both parties are displayed on my LCD screen, Party 1 and Party 2. If Party 2 doesn't answer, I can press the left arrow to cancel and hang up. Then I can remove Party 1 from hold, or if I get Party 2's voicemail, I can press the right arrow to hang up. As soon as Party 2 answers and is ready to join the conference call, I'll press the conference button again. Because my PBX is set up for NY conferencing, I can add additional people by repeating the process. Depending on how your phone system is set up, this feature will work the same, but may look different. The next button I'll cover is the callers list. The callers list stores information for up to 200 of the last received calls. When you press the callers list button, the LCD screen will display the information about the most recent incoming calls. Your phone logs the number and name, if available, of the caller and the date and time when the call was received. Use the up and down arrow keys to cycle through the callers list. To dial the displayed number, just press the hands-free speakerphone button, or lift the handset, or press any line key. To delete the item being displayed in the callers list, press the delete button. Press the delete button a second time at the prompt to erase the item. Now let's take a look at the eight programmable keys. One of the benefits of the eight programmable keys is that they provide quick access to commonly used features. This can vary for each individual depending on what features you use most. For example, my system administrator has programmed the phone lock to one of my programmable keys. I could also access this feature through the options list menu, but with a programmable key, I can access this feature with the single push of a button. Let's take a quick look at some commonly used features. To activate Call Forward, press the Call Forward button. Call Forward can also be programmed through the Options List menu. Use the up and down arrow keys to cycle through the five Call Forward options. Your choices are Call Forward All, Call Forward Busy, Call Forward No Answer, All Off, or All On. To forward all incoming calls to another phone number, press the down arrow key until the display reads 1 All. Press the right arrow to configure Call Forward All. Press the down arrow to display the Call Forward state, whether Call Forward is on or off. Press the right arrow to select Change. Press the up or down arrows to toggle Call Forward on or off. Press the right arrow to set and select this option. Next, press the down arrow to bring up the Call Forward number menu. Then press the right arrow to select Change. Now use your dial pad to enter the number you want your incoming calls to be forwarded to. If you make a mistake, use the left arrow to backspace. When you are finished, press the right arrow to set the number. Following the on-screen instructions, press the left arrow to select Done, and press the pound sign to confirm the call forward choice. Notice the call forward button is lit, and the LCD screen is displaying Call Forward All. You can repeat these steps to set up Call Forward Busy, this is when you are on the phone. Call forward no answer. This is when you don't answer the call within a certain number of rings. You can also set all off or all on. Now let's turn call forward off. I can go back to my original first menu and turn call forward all off. Or I can go to the fourth menu, all off. This will turn all call forwarding options off. This includes call forward busy and call forward no answer. For this example, I'll demonstrate all off.
I'll highlight all off, then I'll select Change, Done, and I'll confirm with the pound sign. D&D, &D, or Do Not Disturb, is a feature on the phone that when activated prevents the phone from ringing or receiving incoming calls. When you press the D&D &D button, the LED lights up and the D&D &D status is displayed on the LCD screen. When a user calls a number that has D&D &D turned on, the caller will receive a busy signal or a message depending on how the administrator has set up the account. When D&D &D is set up with Call Forward, all incoming calls can be sent to voicemail or to another number. Pressing the D&D &D button a second time will turn off the Do Not Disturb feature. XML is a language much like HTML. All AstroSIP phones have a built-in XML browser. The XML application for IP phones allow users to create custom services they can use via the phone's navigation keys, dial pad, and LCD display. These services include things like weather, traffic reports, contact information, and stock quotes. XML also allows users to build custom applications such as inventory and order status. One hotel even built a custom application to provide real-time room status for their maid service. So when the maid service was finished with a room, the maid would press a button on the phone indicating the maid service was complete and the room was ready for the next guest. This way the front desk had real-time information knowing when the room was ready. There is more information about XML and an XML development toolkit available on the Astro website. With a sleek, elegant design and a compact footprint, this multi-line SIP telephone delivers advanced features and performance traditionally only found in higher priced products. For all of us here, we would like to thank you for your interest in Astra.